In this video, we will place objects on light-sensitive paper to make cyanotypes. We will then make contact prints of our cyanotypes to create reverse tone versions of the original. By the end of this video, you will have seen the complete process of how to make several kinds of cyanotype. Let's go back to the beginning of this process. While I set up the workspace, I'll answer three common cyanotype questions. What is a cyanotype? A cyanotype is an ultraviolet sensitive medium that can be applied to various papers and fabrics. When was cyanotype discovered? The cyanotype process was discovered in 1842 by Sir John Herschel. Is cyanotype also a sunprint? Yes. A cyanotype can also be called a sunprint. Architects used to call them blueprints. I learned these facts and more in the Book of Alternative Photographic Processes by Christopher James. This book contains formulas and proper chemistry adjustments for many kinds of photographic processes, in addition to cyanotype. Let's make our two-part cyanotype solution. We will need four paper cups. We will also need about 500 milliliters of water. This is boiled water that I allowed to cool back to room temperature. We'll bring in a digital scale, which allows us to properly weigh our dry and wet ingredients. This scale is set to grams throughout the video we're watching. Potassium ferrocyanide is our first ingredient. Ferric ammonium citrate is our other cyanotype ingredient. In this video, we will combine these dry ingredients with our liquid water to make a part A and part B cyanotype solution. We will store our pre-mixed Part A and Part B inside these tall black bottles. Let's start by making 200 milliliters of our Part A and Part B cyanotype solution. First, we'll dose the dry ingredients into their paper cups. We'll take our potassium ferrocyanide and dispense 20 grams into an empty paper cup. The ruby red color is exactly what it should look like. I recommend keeping this away from children because it looks like fancy sugar. Dispense 20 grams of potassium ferrocyanide into the empty paper cup and set it aside. Next, we take our ferric ammonium citrate and dispense 50 grams into a new paper cup. Ferric ammonium citrate has a yellow-green look to it. It's a bit tennis ball colored. Dispense 50 grams of ferric ammonium citrate into the paper cup and set it aside. Now we have dispensed our dry ingredients into paper cups. It's time to dispense our liquid ingredient into paper cups. So let's pour 200 milliliters of distilled water into an empty cup. And let's pour 200 milliliters of distilled water into another empty cup. Now we have properly dosed ingredients. The cup on the left contains 20 grams of potassium ferrocyanide. To the cup of potassium ferrocyanide, we carefully pour 200 milliliters of water. We will pour from cup to cup to mix it up. We now have 200 milliliters of potassium ferrocyanide solution. I'll funnel this into our bottle labeled Part A. By squeezing the bottle lightly before I fill it, I am also expelling as much air as possible before putting on the lid. Let's make part B of our cyanotype solution, 50 grams of ferric ammonium citrate. To the cup, we will carefully pour 200 milliliters of water. Then we pour from cup to cup to mix it up. Now we've got our 200 milliliter solution of ferric ammonium citrate. I'll funnel this solution into our bottle labeled Part B. Now we have both parts of our two-part cyanotype solution. By mixing equal parts of A and B, we get a light-sensitive liquid that can be brushed onto paper. To make cyanotype paper, we'll need a brush. This is a dollar store foam brush. This is a plastic tub I got from mixing liquid ingredients. This is a digital scale, 
which is set to grams. Our cyanotype solution is made by mixing equal parts A and B. To the tub, I will add 15 milliliters of potassium ferrocyanide, which is labeled part A. Next, I'll add 15 milliliters of ferric ammonium citrate, which is labeled part B. Mix the ingredients by swirling it up. Be careful to keep all the liquid in the tub. The color of cyanotype solution should be similar to the color of the ferric ammonium citrate in its dry state. Now we have a ready-to-use cyanotype solution that can be brushed onto paper. So we're ready to make cyanotype paper! For our cyanotype paper, I'm starting with this sketch pad, which I also got at the dollar store. Most paper works well for cyanotype, as long as it can hold up to the washing that we'll need to do to it later on. Sketchbooks and spiral bindings make it easy to flip open and paint directly onto their pages. I'll soak the foam brush with our cyanotype chemistry. Once I have a fully loaded brush, I'll find a good way to distribute it over the paper. The paper is somewhat wet by the time I'm done brushing it. I'll remove it from the spiral binder as carefully as possible. Here's a view of our cyanotype paper, front and back. I'll leave it to dry while I coat three additional cyanotype papers. Now we have four pieces of cyanotype paper. They have been air drying for about 10 minutes and each paper is dry to the touch. Let's flip over the papers on the left and brush additional cyanotype solution onto their back. This will give us a cyanotype paper that has two light sensitive sides. We'll see the difference between a two sided cyanotype and a single sided cyanotype later in this video. It has now been an hour since I started brushing these papers and they are all dry to the touch. We have two sheets of cyanotype paper taped to our cardboard and it's nearly time to make our cyanotype. In this video, we'll place objects directly on the surface of our cyanotype paper and then expose that paper to sunlight. We'll then wash the exposed cyanotype with water. Cyanotypes turn blue in the areas that receive the most sun exposure. On a white paper, cyanotypes will remain white in the areas that receive the least sun exposure. Cyanotype is like black and white photography, but with blue replacing the black. Let's return to our freshly made pieces of cyanotype paper. As you just saw, we're going to make cyanotypes by placing objects directly on the paper and then exposing the paper to sunlight. This style of no camera photography is called a photogram. And in this video, we will make two identical cyanotype photograms. I'll switch to a wider camera view to provide a better context of my working environment. I'm currently in my living room and the blinds are drawn so that only indirect light is coming into the room. This portable standing desk provides a mobile work surface for cyanotyping. The workstation is on wheels so I can arrange cyanotypes in the shade. When they're ready, I can wheel the whole thing out onto the back patio for sun exposure. Let's return to the view directly above the mobile cyanotype workstation as I wheel it out onto the back patio. It's about 10 a.m. on a spring day in Southern California. Strong sunlight is falling directly onto our cyanotype papers. After about 10 seconds of sun exposure, the paper's color has already changed from yellow-green to a blue-green. With cyanotype paper, anywhere that receives direct sun exposure will begin to turn blue and then eventually a flat gray color. Areas that are shaded from the sun 
will remain mostly yellow-green, and they will eventually wash out to become white. It's been about 20 minutes since we began our cyanotype exposure, and they look done. I'll flip the two-sided cyanotype around, and we can arrange the same items on the paper as before. The strong sunlight hitting the front of the page has given me a template for where to place these objects on the back of the page. Since our single-sided cyanotype paper is finished, we'll remove it from the cardboard and place it inside for now. We are ready to expose the second side of our two-sided cyanotype. I'll remove the cardboard shade, and we can watch as the photogram actually happens. This is similar to what occurs inside a film camera while an exposure is being made. Areas that are exposed to direct sunlight will begin to darken. Areas that remain unexposed to light will not darken at all. And it looks like our two-sided cyanotype sheet is fully exposed. Let's wheel our workstation over to the kitchen sink. I'll remove the items and the masking tape from our two-sided cyanotype, and I'll bring back the single-sided cyanotype, and we'll take the masking tape off it too. Now let's bring in our wash tub. This is a plastic bin and I'm filling it with tap water. Once there's some water in the tub, I'll put the first cyanotype sheet in. Immediately, the gray color starts to become more blue. The yellow goes a little more white. And now we can add our two-sided cyanotype to the bath as well. Let's make sure we move the water around so that the cyanotype is fully saturated. I usually give cyanotypes two water baths. The first bath does most of the visible development work, and it usually lasts about two minutes. The second bath does the cleanup work, and eliminates undeveloped cyanotype chemistry that still resides within the paper. That second bath can last up to 10 minutes, depending on the thickness of the paper. Once the cyanotypes are fully developed, I'll set them back on the cardboard to dry for a bit. We now have two somewhat identical cyanotypes. The cyanotype on the left has an image on both sides. The cyanotype on the right has an image on just one side. We'll leave these prints on a clean piece of cardboard to dry for 24 hours. Now our cyanotype photograms are fully dry and we can take a closer look at them. Our single-sided cyanotype looks good. Our double-sided cyanotype looks good too even though I ripped the corner. So both of our cyanotype photograms depict white objects against a blue background. But what if I want to make a cyanotype where the objects are blue and the background is white? Basically, how do I reverse the tones of a cyanotype? Well, we can reverse the tones of a cyanotype by making what's called a contact print. We make a contact print by using a contact printing frame. Into the contact printing frame, we will put our exposed two-sided cyanotype. Next, we'll lay a two-sided unexposed sheet of cyanotype paper over the exposed cyanotype. The back of the printing frame is secured and the frame is left to expose in the sunlight for several hours. When we develop our contact print cyanotype, we will see a reverse tone version of the original cyanotype. Contact printed cyanotypes will depict shadow areas as blue and bright highlight areas as white. And our original cyanotype does the reverse. Shadow areas are white and highlights are blue. If you want to make a contact print, but you don't have a contact printing frame, I'll show you a way to make a contact print using a standard picture frame. I got this frame from the dollar store. We'll remove the back from the frame. Into our frame, we will place a single-sided cyanotype with the image surface facing up. Take an unexposed sheet of cyanotype paper and place it face down onto the exposed cyanotype. It's called a contact print because the surface of the exposed image comes into direct contact 
with the surface of the unexposed image. Let's place our cyanotype paper sandwich back into its frame. Now we have our single-sided cyanotype contact print on the right. Our double-sided cyanotype contact print is on the left. Let's wheel our cyanotypes into the sunlight. Our single-sided cyanotype is fully exposed after an hour. Let's see how the double-sided cyanotype is coming along. It looks good to me. The color gray indicates that it received the greatest amount of sun exposure. The greenish-blue color shows areas that received the least amount of sun exposure. This two-sided cyanotype is ready to be flipped and re-exposed on its other side. I'll do my best to align them, and then I'll close the frame back up. We'll expose the second side of our two-sided cyanotype contact print for another hour. Now we'll bring back our single-sided cyanotype, and we can develop both of our cyanotype contact prints. Let's take a look at the double-sided cyanotype contact print. It looks well exposed on both sides. It looks like a pretty identical exposure on both sides of our two-sided cyanotype contact print. Let's take a look at the single-sided cyanotype contact print in the frame from the dollar store. It looks well exposed as well. Let's remove the frame and replace the back safely. Let's take another look at our single-sided cyanotype contact print sandwich and we'll see it's basically a mirror image of itself. Let's remove the original cyanotypes for now and just look at the exposed but undeveloped cyanotypes. Here's the front of our cyanotype contact prints. Here is the other side of our double-sided cyanotype contact print. Let's bring the wash tub in. I'll lay the cyanotypes down on the dry tub, and then I'll bring in the kitchen sink sprayer to wash them down. This is my favorite part to demonstrate. It's been about two minutes and our first bath is nearly complete. I'll flip the double-sided cyanotype contact print over and we can see how the other side is developing. At the two minute mark, the double-sided cyanotype contact print looks like it has darker blues compared to the single-sided cyanotype contact print. I'll dump this water out and then fill the tub back up with a little water for its second bath. Now these cyanotypes have been fully developed and there is no more yellow tint to any part of the paper. I've set them both to dry on a window screen. By lying flat on a screen with air circulation, these prints will dry faster than when left to dry on a piece of cardboard. We'll leave the cyanotype contact prints to dry overnight. So what did we do just now? We made four cyanotypes during this video, and each can show us something different about how the medium can be enjoyed. We learn that cyanotypes can make images of objects. We learn that we can make cyanotypes which have two sides. We learn that we can reverse the tones of a cyanotype by contact printing it. We learn that we can make cyanotypes that have only one side, and that one-sided cyanotypes can also be reversed in a contact printing frame but the results are somewhat less dramatic. The medium of cyanotype is full of possibility. I've had a very good time making cyanotypes with you.